Hello, this is your Embedded Ethics team. In this video, we will be discussing externalities and dual-use technologies to help you answer the homework questions. In this video, we will define externalities and dual-use technologies, two concepts that relate to how AI both positively and negatively impacts society. To help make these definitions clear, we will be going over several examples. We will also provide some theoretical background on these concepts that will help you be proactive in identifying externalities and dual-use technologies in the future. First, let's begin by looking at externalities. An externality is a consequence, positive or negative, that arises from one party's action and impacts another party. Externalities are the result of either the production or consumption of a good or service. For example, when I produce electricity by burning coal, I produce electricity efficiently but release pollutants into the air, impacting the people around me. This is a negative externality. When I maintain my house's yard well, it raises the property value of my neighbor's houses. This is a positive externality. The impact of the externality can be private, affecting an individual or organization, or social, affecting society as a whole. Sometimes technology can have both positive and negative externalities. And sometimes it's a little less clear whether the externality is positive or negative. Let's take a look at an example. Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, and a variety of other services provide ancestry testing by using genetic data to estimate the geographic origins of a person's ancestors. To obtain this service, users provide the company with a DNA sample. There are both positive and negative externalities that arise from this. The positive externalities include the ability to connect individuals with their biological family members or inform them about genetic predispositions and health risks. The negative externalities include selling genetic information to third parties and mishandling data. Additionally, ancestry testing has been used to find and convict criminals by mapping out a family tree of distant relatives until a suspect was identified. This was the case with the Golden State Killer. Depending on your viewpoint, the use of ancestry testing to identify these individuals could be considered a positive or negative externality. Externalities reflect the consequence of an action from one party onto another. Now we will talk about dual use technologies, which refer to the impact that arises from secondary usage of a specific technology. The dual use dilemma is a phenomenon where a technology or product of research has a dual effect of positive and negative consequences. This concept arose out of bioethics and medicine, a field where medical innovation often leads to inadvertently tragic or even fatal outcomes. A classic example of a dual-use technology is the Manhattan Project, headed by the US government during World War II. Let's talk through how this technology is dual-use. When Oppenheimer began his research into theoretical physics, he did not intend to create a bomb. But during the volatile political climate of that time, his strictly academic research bled into the public and geopolitical sphere in an arms race with the Nazi regime. There were definitely positive outcomes of Oppenheimer's work. The first was a purely intellectual one, the academic freedom to uninhibitedly participate in intellectual inquiry. The second was the immense potential for nuclear research to be used in ways to benefit society. For example, providing a clean energy source. However, there were also significant harms that arose out of Oppenheimer's work. For instance, the product of his work, the atomic bomb, was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing nearly 230,000 people. Who's to take responsibility for this outcome? An important thing to remember is that sometimes the thing you intend for your technology to do is not the only thing it can or will do. Since technology must always be created with this understanding, it's important to be proactive in thinking about dual use outcomes. Some dual uses for a certain technology will be easier to predict than others. Let's walk through four scenarios to guide your thinking about potential dual use cases. And to make this concrete, we'll also consider an example throughout this, uh, throughout this slide, uh, specifically, large language model chatbots like ChatGPT. We first begin by thinking about the intended outcomes, how you expect your technology to behave. For example, OpenAI says that the purpose of ChatGPT is to follow an instruction in a prompt and provide a detailed response. The second scenario is unintended but, but foreseen outcomes. 
these are behaviors or actions that your technology exhibits that were not designed that were not designed for intentionally, but that the designers did conceive of. For example, OpenAI knew that there could be false information disseminated through ChatGPT since it is only a large language model, not any definitive source of information. The third scenario is unintended but foreseeable outcomes. This is a superset of the outcomes captured by the second scenario. It includes all outcomes that could have been responsible reasonably foreseen by the designers, even if the designers did not actually foresee them. For example, ChatGPT has a huge potential for displacing human workers, including those that perform jobs that require specialized skill sets. OpenAI is doing work to address this issue, but all this work is retroactive. The fourth scenario is unforeseen and possibly impossible to have foreseen outcomes. These are unintended outcomes that would have been unreasonable to foresee. For example, last year, journalist Kevin Ruse reported that during his lengthy and personal conversation with Bing's chatbot, it professed its love to him. Microsoft was then in a flurry to determine the root cause of this erratic behavior and ultimately decided that it was a case of hallucination. Another example of dual use in the context of AI is current research on developing machine learning models that identify toxicity in liquids. Let's think about how this can be an example of a dual use technology. The positive effects of this technology are plentiful. Currently, less than 1% of chemicals under commercial use in the US have undergone toxicity characterization. The characterization process is so laborious and costly that chemical growth vastly outweighs capacity to characterize them. However, these models could also be developed to engineer viruses or toxins. They could even be used further to target specific individuals or communities. So we really need to think about how we keep individuals or institutions responsible for self-regulating and anticipating these outcomes. Now, this can be hard because dual-use technologies are not created in a vacuum. Dual-use technologies are a product of a collective institution or organization, such as a university, a company, or even the military. And there is often immense pressure from these institutions for individuals to publish a research paper, generate a profit, or defend one co one's country. Finally, institutions are often intentionally constructed so that individual workers are strictly limited to one component of the final product, this means that oftentimes they don't get to see the bigger picture, and it can be very hard for them to predict what kind of outcomes a piece of technology might have. However, despite these challenges, it is still important to consider what possible dual uses might arise from a specific piece of technology when we are thinking about designing and developing it.